Wherever it is possible, grass grows and the Gobi is transformed from an extreme arid desert into an incredible, almost surrealist landscape. Everyone wants to take advantage of this gist of nature while it lasts, and the desert is populated by humans and animals from the high steps which surround the Gobi. In a country where 60% of the population are nomadic cattle breeders, with over 35 million head of cattle, fresh pasture is the most precious commodity of all, and each family will try to lead its herds to the best places. But here the camel continues to be king. It is by far the most valuable animal for the nomads and has been used by traders and travelers since antiquity. For these ruminants, now is the time to store energy and their erect humps are evidence of this, an unmistakable sign that they are well fed. If they do not work, they can go for up to 10 months without drinking water, living on the accumulated reserves and losing up to 25% of their weight without suffering any consequence because the water they lose is only from their body tissues and not from the blood, so the heart does not have to make any additional effort. For over 80 years, the Tenzin Daya family has moved to this region every summer with their 200 horses, 800 sheep and goats, and 200 cows. They continue to be prosperous cattle breeders, despite the fact that two years ago, a particularly harsh winter killed over half of their cattle. The Tassin Daja live in a camp composed of four gurs, the traditional shelter perfectly adapted to the needs of nomadic life. It is cheap, large, can be put up and taken down very quickly. It is easy to transport, robust, cool in summer, and warm in winter. The girls always face south and the entrance is painted in bright colors to ward off evil spirits. Inside, the stove, which also serves as heating, stands in the center, and around it, the beds, a few pieces of furniture, and most of all, the Buddhist shrine. Obviously, the base of their diet is meat, especially lamb. Milk is also an important ingredient of their diet. From it, they produce at least 12 different products, including airag, a drink they make only in summer from fermented mare's milk. This is very healthy and helps combat tuberculosis. They also drink agi, an alcohol made by distilling cow's milk, which they have been making for thousands of years. While the women remain inside the girls taking care of the home, the men get ready for one of the favorite activities of these nomadic herdsmen, breaking in the colts born the previous spring. Under the direction of Ninten Basara, the chief of the clan, the riders round up the horses, trying to make sure the untamed colts are trapped in the center so they can be caught using a pole. The Mongols never mark their horses or give them names. They distinguish them by their color and have over 200 words to differentiate them. For them, the horse represents much more than simply an animal used for transport and carrying goods, which they began to tame 4,000 years before Christ. Mm -hmm. 
small, fibrous and incredibly resistant, with great strength, greatly out of proportion to their size, these horses were key in enabling Genghis Khan to create such a powerful army. The chronicles tell us that the soldiers slept on their mounts while they continued to travel through the night. When food was scarce, they even drank the blood of their horses. On the other side of the country, beyond the desert and the infinite steppes, along the border with Siberia, a vertical world rises up, dominated by taiga. Taiga is a Russian term for the northern forests composed of firs, larches and silver birches, perfectly adapted to the strong winds and the low temperatures. We are in one of the most remote areas of Mongolia. Here there are no roads and settlements are connected only by the paths trodden by the nomads. At the end of the summer, the meltwaters from the mountains cover the majority of the surface of valleys and grasslands, making it extremely difficult to move the cattle from one place to another. For the Dahat, the inhabitants of these lands since the days of Genghis Khan, it is time to transfer the herds from the highlands to less demanding regions where they will spend the autumn. The Dahat can move up to 15 times a year in search of more fertile pastures or places where the wind is less fierce. In winter, however, when grass is scarce, the families must separate and search for food independently. The only boat raft still remaining since the Russians left cannot carry all their cattle from one side of the river Tsangan Nur to the other. But here time is not important, and while they wait, they chant and drink tea. If they cannot cross today, then they'll do so tomorrow. While it is still summer in the lowlands, up in the valleys of the Dokhod Sayani mountains, autumn arrived several weeks ago, suddenly and without warning. The colors of the forest are changing, and little by little the entire range of reds, ochres, and yellows appear. This is the home of the Tsatan, one of the smallest and least well-known tribes in Asia. For these mountain nomads, the essential pillar of their subsistence is the reindeer, but this does not by any means cover all their basic necessities. Their living conditions are so harsh that they are the poorest nomads in Mongolia, surviving on little more than their wits. These people came here from the mountain peaks just seven days ago, and they will spend the rest of the autumn here. It is only at the end of August the first snows appear and gradually the forest is covered in a blanket of white. But for the Tsatan, this is the best season of the year because they are no longer plagued by mosquitoes, the temperatures are relatively mild and there is still sufficient food for the reindeer. Their day begins with the milking of their animals. At this time of year, the reindeer are milked twice a day, and from the milk they make butter, a cheese called aurul, cream and yogurt. Smoked meat and wild berries complete their diet. The life of the Tsatan has never been easy, but since the arrival of communism, part of their culture, traditions and daily life have been destroyed. 
the herds of reindeer which had belonged to them since time immemorial became state property. Some Satan preferred to kill them rather than see them disappear. They had to answer to a Mongol official who was completely ignorant of their customs and traditions and forced them to comply with very strict rules entirely unsuited to a nomadic lifestyle. <laughs> 